quit Facebook? Could you, should you, would you, not anytime soon? How else is my mom going to see my kids growing up, and I stay in touch with all my elderly aunts and cousins who live out of town, says C. Tremblay, a 39-year-old mom of two. I admit, I check it a lot daily, that way I'm always in the loop and never, ever miss anyone's birthday, once you check in, you can't check out. Facebook's attention-sucking tentacles won't let go, even if there are creepy lurkers knowing your business, shameless sponsor feeds, and stomach-turning security breaches and misappropriation of sensitive information. This past week's damning data mining saga sheds light on the spinning, filtering and influencing that goes on. The improper gleaming of personal information from 50 million Facebook users caused an uproar. Truly an anti-friend, but we stay, no matter how abusive the relationship. Tremblay is one of more than 2.2 billion users engage with the platform every day, making Facebook billions of dollars. While young people are favoring other platforms like Instagram and Snapchat, there's no freedom from Facebook FOMO for the masses, the average Canadian user checks in 14 times a day. More likely it it's 14 times an hour. We're amongst the world's heaviest daily users. According to Dr. Frank Farley, professor at Temple University, some of us will push the delete button but most won't because it's where so many of us live in the 21st century, immersed in illusionary and imaginary bonding. Deleting it would leave many homeless, perhaps being a form of digital death wish. It brings the whole world to our personal screen and psychological life, and it's way too fascinating and too much fun to abandon. Well, there's a cost to belonging. George Lowenstein, the Herbert A. Simon Professor of Economics and Psychology at Carnegie Mellon University, says that Facebook is so popular because it feels to people like it's free. They have no sense that they're giving anything up, or what they're giving up, people are oblivious to the fact that the information they post on Facebook is, essentially, stolen from them and used for purposes they don't understand and probably wouldn't endorse if they did, says Lowenstein. If you were at a bar, and someone grabbed your just poured beer and started drinking it, you'd be totally upset, you might even start a fight. Theft of information is much less tangible than theft of concrete objects so people get a lot less upset, but the pull is overpowering, and it's hard to resist the temptation to check in or at least, see what's happening. These are natural human instincts that Facebook has spent more than a decade training its user base to consider routine, says John Drew, who teaches digital media at Adelphi University in Garden City, New York. He stresses that there is life after Facebook town. For some it's called Snapchat and for others it's called Twitter. There will soon be others too, and Facebook, through its ill-conceived corporate behavior, has made this more certain than ever before. In light of the scandal, for those who have the privilege to migrate to other social networks, some people will undoubtedly cease to prioritize privacy, says Drew. The decision becomes a little easier now, and especially if one feels like Facebook's unscrupulous data-sharing endeavors have contributed to problematic consequences, such as election outcomes. Today or this coming week is a great day to deactivate your account, says Drew, not only to send a message to Facebook's senior leadership that what they did is not okay, but taking a break from the platform is also intrinsically healthy in that it allows one to pay closer attention to just how addicted or compulsive some of our virtual behaviors have become. Think of this small political action like Earth Day only instead of remembering to take better care of the planet's physical environment you are remembering to take care of its social environment too, he adds, asterisk 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 so long, Facebook. Psychologist Frank Farley offers up these tips to deactivate, asterisk 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 just. Do it, you can always reactivate later, asterisk 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 consider the action as an opportunity to check in with yourself and measure the extent to which you are in control of your virtual compulsions, asterisk 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 take a long walk in the woods, or at least outside, after you have done so and pay attention to the bird sounds and the physical magistracy that is our planet Earth without Facebook, asterisk 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 can't go cold turkey. Try a button breakaway, deep six, Facebook for a day or the full weekend and see how it goes, show you have free will, asterisk 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 if you enjoy FB and its contribution to your mediated life, just be more cautious or circumspect in your use of it, asterisk 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 Facebook is not making us happier. There are stuffs out there that social media in general has made some of us feel lonelier than ever before. Is it a healthy place to be? Ask yourself, asterisk, 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 how many of your friends do you actually know? Are there some whose names are unfamiliar and or you wouldn't even recognize in person? Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk is the time you spend on Facebook, for example liking other people's posts, substituting for more meaningful.
interactions with friends, such as telephone calls or in-person meetings, asterisk 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 how does looking at your Facebook feed make you feel? Does it make you feel like life is passing you by, that all your friends are leading lives that make yours seem dull and unproductive? One or more yes responses might be an indication that Facebook isn't serving you well, Professor George Lawenstein.